are not many large towns in Africa, such as Accra in the Gold Coast. Those are the thousands of villages. And young men are leaving these villages for the towns where they believe jobs are easily found. But jobs are not the only attraction the town has for the village youth. For the serious and ambitious young men, there are clubs, youth movements, training courses, libraries, and healthy recreation. For the rest, there are the dances, the political excitement, the bright lights, the cinemas, the clubs, and all that the Gold Coast African calls the Giddy Giddy. But away in the villages, where farming is the real livelihood of Africa, the leisure hours can be unbearably dull for the young people. It is small wonder that the lad who leaves the village school is little attracted to farming or manual labour and wants to be off to the town. But ways and means have been found to show that village life can be made more attractive. And here in Pedse, a village in Togoland under United Kingdom trusteeship, in the country of the Ewe people, the chief and his elders wait eagerly to meet a visiting team of workers who will show the villagers how they can help themselves to a happier and fuller life. The chief has heard of the good work done in other villages by this school on wheels and welcomes these visitors who have left their own jobs for a little while to help his village. Here is Mr. Horsu Pobre, who in normal life is a school teacher. Mr. Quarte, a dispenser. Mr. Quenu, a teacher and scout commissioner. Mr. Moses Abwebe, a PT instructor. Miss Senelo, a social welfare assistant. Mr. Titsiwu, a choir master and teacher. Mr. Kumasi Kasena, ex serviceman. Mr. Ajaku, police bandsman. Mr. Bonnie, Cinema interpreter, Mr. Van Leer, clerk to the team, and Mr. Doncor, ex serviceman. The main purpose of the visit was to set an example which other leading members of the community, such as the teachers, the local administrative officials, clerks, and traders, might follow. From distant villages, many such persons had come to learn from the team and were giving their time without payment and providing for their own needs. The good work began by calling the people together to see for themselves how the right kind of training could develop the strength and agility of youth. The three ex-servicemen, PT instructors, showed what physical education can mean to a man. It was a striking demonstration that physical education does mean something different from the exercises usually carried out. So impressed were the villagers by the object lesson given them that within two days regular PT classes were formed and not only the young schoolboys but the men of all ages joined in eager to benefit by the instruction. It was hard work, with a lot to learn, but they went at it with a will. It was something enjoyable and exciting that could be done in their spare time. Besides drill, there were games for the young women, organized by Miss Senelaw, which, by their free and happy nature, added fun to physical effort. 
The instructor's skill kept everyone alert and eager to enjoy every movement. And in this wholehearted desire for physical improvement, even the older women, who complained they had been left out, showed that they too could enjoy and benefit by the good work. Perhaps the most important part of the work was the teaching of literacy. The methods of Dr. Laubach, adapted for the every people, were used by the instructor. Seated on the right are those who have come at their own expense to learn how to teach. The members of the visiting team are volunteers from distant places who can only spend a short time in this village. When the team is gone, those we now see learning how to teach must themselves carry on the work of teaching others. The careful demonstrations by the teacher were gradually understood. His cheerful patience was fully rewarded by the eager efforts of his pupils to understand. In isolated village life, there is one very urgent need some elementary knowledge of first aid, for accidents can often happen. So Mr. Quarty's lessons in first aid were highly popular. His pupils watched everything with the keenest interest. They will have gathered enough from his lessons to give at least sufficient aid in cases of minor accidents to lessen pain and danger till a doctor or dispenser can be summoned. Mr. Quarty was at first very doubtful whether his classes would be successful, but he soon discovered he was mistaken. He became one of the most enthusiastic of the team members. He gave his pupils instruction for dealing in the right way with minor injuries which, if neglected, can become serious. Perhaps the most popular lesson for women were those given by Miss Senelor in her needlework class. Her pupils were quick and eager learners, and many useful and attractive garments were made by these varied and interesting methods under the skillful guidance of the instructress. Community singing was an excellent means for expressing mass enthusiasm, in which the team and the pupils all joined. The Eve people are justly known to be one of the most musically gifted peoples of Africa, and within two or three days, the singing was a real delight.